Welcome to Grace Believers Bible Study. Anyway, tonight's going to be a little bit different than a normal service in here. A normal service consists of the same thing you get at the church. I mean, exactly. Tonight, uh, we're going to have a testimonial service. And that's people who have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And, of course, in just a moment, well, Johnny's going to be the first one up. And uh, if there's anybody else that's feel compelled to, to give their testimony, then that's what you need to do. <laughs> you know, because the testimonies of an individual are really more powerful than anything that I can say because it's the real life situation of a man getting saved. It's above and beyond. It's the most important thing anybody has ever done in this life or the next. That's how you get to the next life. So normally we take questions in here. We answer them. If you've got a question, we're going to deal with it right out of the King James Bible. And if we don't have an answer, we'll try to find you one for the following week. But uh, without wasting any more time on my part, uh, Brother Johnny Bledsoe is going to come up and give his testimony tonight, no matter how long it takes. Whip on up here, turn around, face the audience. And we're going to have, before that, we're going to open up with a prayer. But come on up real quick so we can let Paul sit back down. Okay. Would you give he wasn't talking about Paul, she's talking about me. There's something wrong with this picture. <laughs> Would you bow your heads in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for a place to meet, people to preach to, people to be edified by the Word of God. And if there's somebody lost in here tonight, we pray that after these testimonies or during the testimonies that they'll trust Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, believing that Christ was crucified for the forgiveness of their sins, that He was buried, that He was resurrected from the dead on the third day according to the Scriptures to justify them. And there's no asking for forgiveness because He's already done that 2,000 years ago. Sin is not a problem. Sin is not a problem. It's your unbelief in the finished work of the cross that's the problem. It's in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank all y'all for coming out. I got friends. All y'all, I guess, my friends. I got buddies back there. Closer. And uh, I won't give my testimony tonight, but before I do, I got a few more things to do. This is King James Bible. If you want the Word of God, the King James Bible. The other Bibles you have is they don't say the same thing that the King James Bible does. So I just, I'll let y'all know that. And also, I was going to do some scriptures out of the Bible and just to let, let, let everybody know who y'all are. You know, y'all may know y'all Gentile, but I'm going to let y'all know y'all Gentile. If y'all would, go to Romans chapter 11, verse 13. This is Paul speaking. Is everybody got their head? No. Now you know how it feels, don't you? <laughs> <laughs>
since the world began. Okay, let's go to 2 Timothy 2.15. deliver unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. And he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Okay, let's go back to Ephesians 4.30. Ephesians 4.30. saved, you saved, and you sealed to the day of redemption. That's what Paul says here in Ephesians. Alright. Let me show you all back to Romans 5 1. Romans 5 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 4.25 Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Okay, I have, I want y'all to know I'm a grace believer. I didn't have the background of any churches whatsoever. Amen. Thank you. And I've, I've written a 
I'm starting my testimony. I want to thank Brother Brian Wiggins. I want to thank Brother Jerry Hawk. There he is. Jerry Hawk gave me this Bible here the first night I was here. I couldn't read my little prints. He gave me the big prints, and I got me some glass, and I read it. But I am Johnny B. for Bledsoe. My son, Douglas, so I've done something good in my life. Uh, I was born in 1948, April the 10th. Since I've come up here, I didn't know God. I didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. I heard people talk about Him, and I, I didn't know Him. But I found out that the day I was born, I was in sin. And I, from the time I can remember back, probably five, four or five years old, I've been bad. I've done things that I won't even tell you I've done. But if it could be done, I've done it. They 613 Commandments and ordinances in the in the Bible, and if you break one of them ordinances, you have broken them all. So for six to seven years, four months, I was one bad man. Didn't want to know God. Didn't want to know Jesus Christ. I just, it was me. I, I come up poor in this world. When I was coming up and going to school, didn't even have, never have a TV in my house. Never did have a TV until me and my wife, Linda, married. Got my first TV, so I was, that was a good thing too, me going to school and all. I wasn't the dumbest one in there, but I wasn't the smartest one in school. I had Brother Brian over there going to school with me, so he was he's a little smaller than I was. <laughs> and, Not really. And, but I enjoyed all them times I had back then, but I'm going to tell y'all, no lie. To my buddies back here in the back, which they know, I was one bad XXX X, X, all my life. If it could be done, I'd done it. Bad things, bad things that if you got called up in penitentiary things to downhill where the Lord Jesus Christ is at with me. I, I, I'd, have, I'd have been up there with some of my buddies. But I had, I didn't get caught. I didn't get caught and I, I don't know why. I've been in several bad accidents. God and the Lord Jesus still keeping me here. I think He's keeping me here for me to be here tonight. Amen. Yep. And and talk to all of y'all and and it's just it's just amazing what things will change when you take the Bible. Back in April, I was sitting in the B and B having a hamburger or something. Byron Wiggins come in, Trish and, and Gilbert Shelley. And I'm going to run and talk to him because I know him all his life. Him and I have run around some together. He played in a band, so we knew each other real well. We was talking to him. I was talking to him. And my wife. He asked me what I say. And I said, Hey, Ola, I'm not saved. You know, he said, Well, I'm a preacher. I said, All right. <laughs> uh, Gilbert, I talked to Gilbert. Gilbert, y'all know Gilbert. He's a, he's a pastor up in Prattville, Alabama. And I talked to him, and I have listened to several of his sermons since then. 
And I don't know how many of us that Byron Wiggins sermons, and we talk on the phone all the time, Bible. But that night up there, when I lay up there, just talking to him, I said, I don't want to go to hell. You know, I, I don't need to go there, you know. But I know, I know I don't need to go there. So he had invited me down here to his Bible study. And I come down here to hear him preach the gospel of the grace of God. I don't know how many sermons I've come down. It was several. We met in April at B&B, &B and we, I heard him preach several sermons. And uh, Pastor E.C. Moore is on Brian Wiggins' website. I listened to his, I don't know, from 11 o'clock at night to 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, sometimes to daylight in the morning. I listened to Pastor E.C. Moore, which I never knew, Mr. Moore, except what I saw him on some DVDs. One of the best pastors I've ever heard in my life. The best I've ever heard in my life. Yep. And I've listened to probably 50 or 60 pastors since May 11th. May 11th, I was at home. Laying in bed that night, my wife comes to sleep. And I was laying there crying. I said, I can't live like this no longer. I said, I, I, I said Lord Jesus, my Father, I got to do something. I can't live like this. I can't stand it no longer. So I said to Lord Jesus Christ, May 11th, around 11 o'clock, I said to what he did for me. I didn't know what he did for me so I started. But he, he died on the cross for all of us. Shed his blood for all our sin, past, present, future. He was buried and he was resurrected. Three days. This was in AD 33. And he was raised from the dead for my justification. And I believe in by grace, through faith, I am saved. I got my salvation. And I'm a different person. I'm a new creature, new man in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yep. And I don't want to change my, I wish you can't turn, go back but if I could go back knowing what I live now I would have been living for the Lord Jesus Christ all my life. Yeah. But I, I stand in the Bible and before I get that's about all my testimony I was bad, I'm good, I'm saved, got my salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did for me at Calvary, what he did for all of y'all. Some of y'all may think y'all need to confess your sins. He, he confessed your sin when he died on the cross at Calvary. That was for y'all. Everybody. You don't have to ask him for forgiveness. He was forgiven then. But I'm like Brian Wiggins over there. You don't go out, you don't need to go out and shoot nobody. Uh, you may have to one of these days. But you what I read a while ago in the Bible that you seal it's the day of redemption. And I think that may be all of my testimony. I guess I've told y'all everything I need to tell y'all. But I do want to tell you something. I'm a man. I told y'all I've been bad. But I love every one of y'all. I'm glad y'all was here. And could hear me give my testimony. I could get into other things that people say about I'm y'all in drugs and all that. But I told y'all I've done it all. 
So, Lord Jesus Christ, I owe y'all. That's my testimony. Amen. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Brother Jerry Hawk from Chattanooga. He's, he lives down in uh, Milton with us now, or Pace, and he goes to our church down there. But go ahead, Jerry. Well, like I said, my uh, background is a lot different from uh, Johnny. Johnny. I'm almost called you Randy. Johnny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was in the so called church system, denominational system, for all my life. I started going, my grandfather took me to church when I was six years old. And I had a lady come and grab me up, take me down to the altar, and, and that, uh, ask me to ask God to forgive me for my sins and all that stuff. Well, let me tell you something. A six-year-old don't know what's going on. That was, you know. And then we'll go from there, we go to, uh, again, when I was a teenager, I felt like I wasn't saved. I walked the aisle again, asking God to forgive me. You don't do that. God forgive us everything when he died on the cross. And there's not anything that we could do. We can't come, we can't ask forgiveness because we can't forgive ourselves even. So God, he's the forgiver. And he forgive me and everybody else that's ever been saved. And uh, he took all our sins and nailed them to the cross. Every one of them, past, present, and future. And if you, if you uh, go, keep going to the domination system, you will never hear Paul. Rarely ever will you hear Paul preach like he's supposed to be preached. And uh, Paul is our apostle. That doesn't make him greater than Jesus. Jesus told him what to say. Told him what to say. And uh, we go to look at uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. We are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that neither rightly abides the word of truth. And rightly abides the word of truth means that all the Bible is not written for our salvation. Only Romans 2 Philemon. If you if you go anywhere to the you go to the left of uh, uh, Romans, you're in the Old Testament. It's not going to do you any good. But you need to know it, but you don't need to really know it in the depth that you know the Romans of Philemon. If you go to the right of Philemon, you're in the uh, tribulation period and the thousand year reign of Christ on earth. We're not going to be there. we will be raptured out of here. When God comes back with a shout in the air, we're up. If we are Christians, we will be up there with him forevermore in heavenly places. Not on this earth. And like I said, all my life, I was not I wasn't saved. And I had a surgery coming up in 19, boy, 1908. I was diagnosed with lung cancer. I had, uh, I had surgery in, uh, scheduled for March of 2009. Well, I knew I wasn't ready to have that surgery. I've had several major surgeries, took a couple of uh, heart surgeries and uh, open heart surgeries and a couple of other major surgeries before that. And so I was scheduled for surgery. I knew I wasn't safe. I knew if I died on, on that surgery table, I would go straight to hell. I would burn in hell forever. So I began to question things. I went to my pastor, Baptist minister. Didn't know what he was talking about. He told me, we well, just need to say the sinner prayers again, rejoin the church, and be, and be baptized again. No, oh, no way. I did it, though. <laughs> And if I had died on that table, I would have went to hell. Now, the uh, a few months later, I'd been starting looking, been studying the Bible, saying, and I saw the differences, but I didn't understand the differences until one day I was listening to E.C. Moore and uh, Terry McLean and uh, my pastor in Chattanooga, which is uh, Steve Atwood. And they were talking about, you know, Second Timothy 2, 15, where it says, you are self approved unto God a word with that belief, but you're not the body word of truth. Now, that really hit me hard. Hey, that's it. That's the only thing I just, I haven't been studying the way I should. And that is not a recommendation. Hey, it's a 
order. We are ordered to study. If we don't study like that, we will never understand what God wants us to understand. Thank you, Jerry. Let me get that. When did you get saved? When did you get saved? That was after the surgery. After the surgery, yes. Like I said, if I didn't die in the surgery, I'd have gone straight to hell. Even though I'd been in church all the time. Yes, I let them do that. I did everything that the, the church system did do was not correct. Oh, just for the guys in the back, I'm going to put this on. Anyway, uh, I wanted to add a couple of things to uh, to to, John, uh, to Johnny's. Uh, I know him as, as if I didn't know him as Johnny that much. That was always Buford, but yeah. I, <laughs> but if anyway, we got about 25 minutes, and uh, I want to go over some of the things that he touched on, some that Jerry touched on. Uh, but one of the things that, that both of them, you know, mentioned was study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh, how about going over there real quick, if you've got your Bible, 2 Timothy 2.15, so you'll understand what we're talking about here. We're not going to mess with this side over here. I keep this here all the time. And it looks complicated, but it isn't. Is it, Linda? But it sure does look that way. You ain't never seen that before, have you? Yeah. No, oh, who, whoever's got another chart like that? Oh, oh, I know what I'm talking about, other than me up here. Oh, no, never. Oh. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw it over here and make it a little simpler. That Christ was crucified, buried, and resurrected from the dead. Well, everybody knows that pretty much. You know, and you go to your denominational system, and they're going to tell you that this is what you've got to trust. Do you believe that Christ was crucified? Yeah, because everybody has told me that. I went, to, I went to church as a kid or whatever, and he was buried, of course, and he was resurrected. Well, you know what? That won't save anybody. Not a thing. And that's what Peter taught in Acts chapter 2. He taught a murder indictment. But there was no salvation in it to the Jews. But whenever the Apostle Paul came in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, 11, and 12, he said it, the information, the revelations that he got was directly from the risen Savior. See, all them twelve in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John got theirs from the earthly walking around Jesus. There's two. There's an earthly mission of Jesus and there's a heavenly mission of Jesus. We just so happen to be in the heavenly mission, not the earthly mission. But what did he tell? What did the risen Savior tell Paul? That Christ was crucified, buried, and resurrected. For the forgiveness of your sins. He didn't say, and, and that's justification. He didn't say, now look, I'm going to die for all your sins until, watch this. This is the dispensation of the grace of God. It's a mystery that's not in the Bible whatsoever. Peter never knew it. So if somebody's preaching Peter to you for any kind of salvation, get up and walk away because they do not know what they're talking about. And if you've got a preacher or pastor or teacher that wants to discuss it, we'll get the Bible out and we'll show him what it says. There's just nothing in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John for you. Contrary to what you might have been raised on, because I was raised on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I knew John 3, 16, frontwards, backwards, and everywhere else. But there's no salvation in it. Not for you. It doesn't even make sense until you trusted what the Apostle Paul got from the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul says, follow me as I also follow Christ. And that's what we do. Then it makes sense. But it's not for you. It's for your learning and your admonition. But it's not for your salvation. So you're living in a mystery period. But you didn't know that. Now, this was the new revelation that came directly from Jesus Christ. Amen. Directly. No man taught him, it said. No man. He got it from the risen Savior. So, you were born in here. Right here. This happened in A.D. 33, right here, when Christ was crucified. How many sins did he die for? All sins. All. Sin. He died for the sin of the world. And all the sins. But all sins means what? 
your past sins, because you were born here, your present sins, and guess what? Future. All of you are going to do 10 weeks from now, 10 years from now, if you're still alive. He died for every sin. He didn't just die for your past sins and the present sins until the day that you trusted. I'm going to put this right here for trust. The day you trusted Jesus Christ, a lot of the denominational systems would try to tell you, well, he died for all of them backwards. But now these new ones over here that you're going to do tomorrow, he didn't die for them. But he did. He's not going to die again. He's already died. For how many? All sins. Now, you hear the word baptism. What does it mean? It means identification. You know, people want to preach that, that you've got to be baptized for the remission of sins. Well, Peter did say that. But Peter's not your apostle. Johnny told you that it was Paul in Romans 11, 13. Either you want to believe the Bible or you don't. If you don't, you're going to go to hell. I mean, that's just where it's at. You believe what it says, as it says it, where it says it, to who it says it, and he's talking to you Gentiles today. And matter of fact, all the Jews are the same as the Gentile today. And there's scriptures to back all this up. This is just a simple form here. But, you know, people say, well, you've got to be baptized for remission of sins. Hmm. Jesus Christ was baptized. Did he have any sins? No. Well, why has he got to be baptized? So baptism is not for the forgiveness of sins for this age that we're living in. It was here when Peter was preaching, but it's not for us. Jesus Christ was baptized for what? An identification with the nation Israel. That he's a Jew. And he was 30 years old when he was baptized, which means he was a priest. He had to be 30 years old to be a priest in the, in the Jewish religion. So there's a lot more. And there's another reason which I won't go into tonight, but it's a long story that we will cover. Now, but who baptizes you? We, we are baptized. I'm not saying we're not baptized. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, somebody turn there and read it out loud. The moment, the moment, and Johnny used the word accept. It's a free gift. It's in, in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, for by grace, that's an unmerited favor, something you don't deserve, and I don't deserve. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is... The gift of God. Now, if I'm handing here, and I've got Luke here, and I'm giving him something, if he don't reach out and take it, that's his fault. I've already given it to him. It's a gift. What he did, what Johnny did, and what Jerry did, what I did, we reached out and we trusted by faith what Christ did right here on Calvary. I trusted that he, that he was crucified, buried, and resurrected to pay for all my sins. Amen. I trust that. Immediately, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 takes effect. Somebody read that. Who's got it? Okay. Read it out loud. Uh, 12 and 13? 12 and 13. Oh, 12 and 13. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's good right there. You don't have to go any further. Amen. The Holy Spirit's got a capital S, is the one that does the baptism, and it's not in water. It's not in water. Contrary to what Peter preached in Acts 2.38, that was in water. You had to be baptized in water. In Acts chapter 7, when Philip was baptized, I mean, baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, that was in water. You can read it. It says they got off the chariot, went down there, and baptized him. That's water. But you're not in that period. This is the period that you're living in. It's the age of grace. It's called the dispensation of the grace of God. That's that baptism that we're talking about. That happened to you. May the 11th. May the 11th. 11 o'clock. Between 11 and 12. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. And he called me the next morning. I believe you. I trust you. He called me the next morning. I was in Montgomery with Jerry. 
I bursted out in tears. That's how important it is. It really is. Didn't I, Jerry? Right there in the car. But I know a sinner was saved that night and he has got it locked up. He's got eternal life. He's going to heaven. He ain't nothing he can do. Well, you say, uh-oh, there ain't nothing he can do. Let me show you something. If I can. I brought a rag in. I thought, I guess I left it outside. No, this won't work. Uh, it just keeps falling. Somehow we got to get this off. Them on that chair. Well, they're wet. It gets the tape wet. This will work. Yeah, it's going to get it wet. Don't, oh, don't worry about this. Just pay it. I'm just going to draw it up here. You ain't going to hit me, are you? Probably will. <laughs> See, this happens immediately when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Right here. And you ain't got to go there. If you want to check me out, I suggest you do that. But on account of time, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, 20, uh, verse 19, it says, To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world back into Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto Him. So God's not imputing any trespasses to you whatsoever. Trespasses, sins, iniquity. You ain't got none. What's going to send you to hell? Is it your sin? No, it's your unbelief in what he did for you. Sin's been taken care of right there in AD 33. Look, AD 33, we're living what? This is 2015. Almost, well, it's about, 100, uh, it's about, eight, about 1985 years back. 87, something like that, that that took place. All of your sins, if you're born in here in the 1900s, Everybody except her was born in the 1900s in here. All your sins were in the future. Huh. They'll use scriptures on you, take them out of context and so forth. But look, the moment you trust what Jesus Christ did for you, you're placed into the church. What is the church? It's a spiritual, invisible church, and there's somebody in charge of it. The head of it is Jesus Christ. Amen. But he's a member of it. You don't have to sign no paper. You ain't got to go over and get dumped. You ain't got to give your 10% tithing because that don't even that don't count for this time. It was real, it was real right here when Peter was preaching. Have you got to quit sinning? Can't. You're not going to. I'm going to read you something here in a minute. It'd be nice if you could. I know in Romans chapter 5, verse 20, it says, where grace did abound, and that's what you're saved by, or by grace are you saved through faith. Where grace did abound, no, where sin did abound, I'm sorry. Grace did much more abound. So you can't sin enough that grace won't cover it. As he said, you don't go out and start shooting people. You don't want to anymore. That's a changed guy. Anytime... But then look at this. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Linda, his wife, for an example. <laughs> she she don't know what to do. Now Linda smokes. Now has she got to quit cigarettes to be saved? Now some churches won't let her go in there knowing she's smoking. It's against their denominational rules. You can't smoke. Some of them won't let you drink. There's nothing wrong with drinking. You ever heard a preacher tell you that? There's nothing wrong with drinking. There's nothing wrong with what? Smoking. Except you hurt your body. I'm an ex-smoker. Four pack a day guy, so I know what I'm talking about. I wasn't no amateur on this. Or the drinking. Amen. I probably drank more in here one day than any man in here, including you. I don't know, Harold's running a close second. <laughs> but look at here. Here's the thing. The monk is God's righteousness, not yours. You, you can't come up with your own righteousness. You've got to trust 
what Christ did for you and it's the righteousness of God, it's then placed upon your account. You are 100% righteous. As God Himself. You're in the body. Jesus Christ is the head. You're 100% as righteous as God. You're not God, but you've got His righteousness. Now, this is your position. This is your everyday position in Christ. But your everyday walking around condition, that's what we see of each other. Way down here. What we're supposed to do is try to lay it on top of this line, your life. You can try as hard as you want. It ain't going to happen. Now when you get saved, you're right here. You might have been there for a few, four or five hours or a day. Guess what? Somebody made you mad on the road. You said some curse words. You cussed God. You used GD. What? Uh-oh. You fell out. But did you? That's not backsliding. You cannot backslide once you're in the position of 100% righteousness. You're sealed, as he said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. You're sealed until the day of, of, of uh, redemption. And God can't even take you out. He can't even kick you out of the body of Christ. He cannot deny himself. Amen. In Ephesians 1, 13, it tells you the same thing, that you're sealed. Okay? And also in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, it still tells you you're sealed. You either believe you're sealed or you don't. If you believe that you're going to backslide and you can do... Look, if you think you can do one sin, and some people call it backsliding, if you believe you can do one sin to cause you to backslide, guess what? You're lost. Because that's a sin. How many did he die for? All. He died for all. Well, what sin that can you backslide on that's going to take you away from all of that? There ain't nothing that can pull you out of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Even Paul sins. Renee too. <laughs> Even Whitney. Don, no, you ain't going to escape this. <laughs> Doug, you're all a bunch of sinners. And so am I. I just happen to be a saved sinner. I'm going to heaven. <coughs> if you're not a, a saved sinner today, you're going to hell when you die. That's just the way it is. I didn't write the book. I just believe what it says. I don't care if your grandmother took you to church, your granddaddy, somebody, your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, somebody you worship, or you, I mean, just really just think the world of, why would you want to go jump off of a bridge like your mama? Well, you want to, if your buddy jumped off of a bridge, so would you. Well, just because your buddy's going to hell, do you want to go to hell? You know, when I asked him up there right now, he was honest. He said, I'm lost. Amen. And he started coming over here, him and Doug came out here and built a ramp. I knew when they built a ramp, he wasn't going to come just once. <laughs> you don't build a ramp for just once. But there was something holding on to it. I don't know what it was. We never discussed that. Something was holding on to him. He just wouldn't turn loose. And uh, maybe it was because he might have felt like, well, this, if anybody can tell you anything, let me investigate it. And he did. And he went through the scriptures. And he started looking at videos. And he, more preachers, more videos. And all of a sudden he found out, hey, that guy's telling the truth. And he mentioned E.C. Moore. I got saved in my house over here on Maud Avenue in April of 1986 uh, by myself. I was watching him on television. He grew up around, around Basin. He was 24 years older than me, but he became my pastor back in 2002. I didn't even go to church when I got saved. I had enough organized religion that I couldn't stand it. They wanted my tithes. They wanted money. They wanted... It's just, it's a business. My business is telling you the gospel of the grace of God and let you and the Lord figure it out. I'm going to read you this and then we're going to quit. 
Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. See, the preachers, specifically the prosperity preachers, you know, they'll take somebody that's on a fixed income, and they'll take any money, don't get me wrong, but they prey on people on fixed incomes making six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month. They're having a hard time to live as it is. And then they'll throw it up there now. If you'll just put the seed money down. Now right now, Mike Murdo Murdoch and, and, and all them, Ron Parsley, and they're looking for the seed money of $51. Maybe we need a 1,000 people to donate $51. And now if, if you can, you know, if you could donate a 1,000, you'd be in this select group. And look, send us your prayer request. And he's got a stack of papers here. We'll continue to hold on to these and we'll pray for you. Matter of fact, we'll send you a prayer cloth. There, and I told them Sunday down at the church, there's a, there's a woman, she kept that prayer cloth. What not mean wash it because it's supposed to be sacred coming from one of them liars. She kept it for 15 years and died with it as a pauper. Got that prayer cloth though. Let me read this. I get upset with TV preachers. Liars. Chapter 6, one. Chapter six of 1 Corinthians. I'm going to start in verse 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Got any fornicators in here? Of course we do. Nor idolaters. Nor adulterers. Nor effeminate. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves. Anybody ever stole anything? A sin with God is a, I don't care if you stole a pen or you stole an armored truck. Ain't no difference. Ain't no big, no little ones. Nor covetous, nor drunkards, uh-oh, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. The church is going to use that with you every time they preach, pretty much. That's why you've got to come up front and walk the aisle for Jesus. You've got to repent of all of your sins. Why? He died for all of them. So they keep you under their thumb like this. They forget to read the rest of it. Let's see what the rest of it says. And such were some of you. Yeah, we were all there. But you are washed. What are you washed in? The blood of the Lamb. Jesus Christ shed all His blood. You were washed in it. When you trust this right here. Watch this. But you are justified. Clear, justified means cleared of all sin. You don't have no sin if you trust and are washed. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Listen to this. It's so important that you understand this. The Bible says this. All things are lawful unto me. What does that tell you? You can do anything you want. You ain't got me up there standing and telling you, well, look, I see you going sneaking in that house over there when that man's wife is not, when he's gone. Hmm. Or oh, I see you drinking on the job or getting drunk or laying out, cheating on your IRS. It's all the same. All things are lawful in verse 12, but all things are not expedient. They ain't all good for you. But I will not be brought under the power of any policy. Let's go over to uh, chapter 10. It's so important that you know this. Verse 23, 1 Corinthians 10, 23. Uh, again, it's so important. The Lord said it twice. All things are lawful for me. Where are you at? First Corinthians chapter ten, verse twenty-three. Gotcha. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. All things are lawful, but why would you want to do it for a man that went? He went up here and died for you. Your mama can't do it. Your daddy can't die for you. You can't die for your children. It's either you trust this or drop off in hell. I don't care how old you are. If you're 90 years old or if you're 17 years old, whatever the case may be, you're born in sin and it says so in the Bible. 
Uh, and we, that's, that's, we can just go into something like that. But here's why. I've got to, I've got to do one more thing. Romans chapter 7. And y'all getting hungry. What is he going to shut up? Romans chapter 7, verse 15. This is Paul the Apostle. He says, For that which I do, I allow not. In other words, what he does, he don't want to do. For what I would, that I do I not. But what, but what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that doeth, but sin that dwelleth in me. The things that you do, it's because of sin that dwelleth in your body. Because you've got contaminated blood running around in you, and as long as you're alive, you're going to be a sinner. That's just what it is. The only way you can stop being a sinner is trusting what Jesus Christ did. But your old flesh is going to die. There ain't nobody made it out alive yet except Jesus Christ. I'm going to finish reading this and we're going to quit. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present. In other words, I want to do right. For to will is present. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. You just There ain't one of these sins that you say, well, if you do it deliberately or if you do it just... Not deliberately. It's the same thing. If you plan it out, you scheme it out, it's the same thing. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. Listen. But sin that dwelleth in me. That's what it is. Now, I'm going to leave you with this. The only way, now if I was preaching his service, Funeral service, I tell you the same thing. Or anybody's. Amen. The only way for anybody in this room that's not saved to see him again after he did and after you're dead is to trust this right here. Without that, you're going to hell. You're going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever. He's going to be with God forever. He is all saved people in here are. We don't want to try to scary it, but you need to realize there is a God, there is a Savior, and you're going to heaven or hell. One of the two. There ain't no in-betweens. You have to decide. But here's my point. I wish you would. I didn't. He didn't. And Pat didn't. Anybody that's saved in here did not quit sinning when they trusted this right here. They may have wanted to, and they worked on it, and they're getting better every day. Amen. But we're still sinners. But we're saved sinners. What's keeping you from trusting Jesus Christ right now? Is it because you I think I, I wanted to drink that six pack before I did this? No, I'm going to tell you the truth. I lived out in Horn Hill one time, and I had this Methodist preacher come by to see me. I was by myself. And he said, We'd like to get you into the church. And I said, uh, I ain't going to do that. He said, why not? I said, I ain't ready to quit drinking. And whenever I get tired of drinking beer, that's when I'll join your church. Well, see, I didn't know anything. I didn't know I could drink beer and be saved. I didn't know that. I don't drink now by choice, but I ain't got a problem if he has a, if he bought a six-pack tonight. Did you? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, you see what I'm saying? It's not what you do, it's what you trust has already been done for you. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Thank you so much for coming out today. We just thank you so much for the opportunity to preach the Word of God to you. And join us next week.